everyone, it's Vanessa. I thought I would make a really short video ranking every single book that I read for middle grade March. At least favorite to favorites. I thought that it'd be fun to just kind of give you a grasp of all of the things that I read without you having to watch all of my <laughs> wrap ups of them. I ended up reading 12 different books for middle grade March, which is almost a book every other day. I did take kind of a break kind of in between the second and third week and I started reading other things, but I did read a lot of middle grade for middle grade March. My least favorite. See if you can guess as I'm doing these and which one will end up at the top. <laughs> My least favorite book that I read during middle grade March. Not a bad book, just not one that really worked all the way for me. The Thing About Jellyfish by Allie Benjamin. This is kind of like a modern classic. It feels like in the middle grade sphere, like I've heard a lot about this book and I just thought it was okay. I didn't really understand the main character that much and I didn't really connect with her and I didn't understand why the parents in this book were not hugging her and caring for her more than they were. For me, this is a two star read. The next book is No Fixed Address by Susan Nielsen. I gave this one two and a half stars. I just thought it was way too casual for the topic of homelessness that a child is facing, though I did enjoy some of the kind of humor in this book. I didn't think that it landed all of the time. There's like a whole part in this book where he tries out for like a Jeopardy sort of game and I was like, what is happening in this book? The next book is one that I was so excited for in my original TBR for middle grade March, and that is Chirp by Kate Messner. I just thought there was way too much going on in this book, way too many deep social themes, plus a mystery on top of that, being in this camp over the summer. There's a lot going on in this book. I didn't really love how it all like came through and was resolved either. It mostly felt like the grandmothers and the mothers and the female figure saying like we've all faced some sort of harassment, whether it be work, sexual, verbal, you know, etc. Uh, I just felt like it was watered down with all the other things going on in this book. After that is High in the Sky by Remy Lai. I did think this was really cute. I just felt like we were hit over the head with the baking to stop the grief story that this took on. These two kids are baking all of these cakes that they used to bake with their father who's passed away and the older kid kind of thinks that once they finish baking all these pies they'll be over it for sure. And there was a lot of like silly humor in here where they all just called each other booger all the time. I feel like there is an audience for this, it just wasn't me. Then after that is one that I was my last book that I read during middle grade March. Let's see if I can spot it. Where did I put it? Oh, here it is. <laughs> it's Some Places More Than Others by Renee Watson. I just thought that it was a little bit too short, too predictable in some parts, but I did enjoy the point of it. I enjoyed the black history and culture that was portrayed to us. I loved learning about the characters and what family means to them, and I also loved the aspects of city life in this book. After that one, I put Catherine's War, which again was a little bit simplistic and short. I wanted just a little bit more of, especially like information from before the war started with her family or after the war. That would have been really interesting to me, but I did enjoy this one and I would recommend to people who like graphic novels and historical graphic novels. Now we're starting to move into four stars, so these are all books that I really enjoyed. Maybe He Just Likes You, which was a book that did the Me Too movement a lot better than Chirp in my opinion. This is a book by Barbara D that looks into an older middle grader, so one that's maybe 12 or 13. She is being teased by boys to an extent where she's like, this is not teasing anymore. I liked all of the other aspects of this book, like the secondary plot and kind of the hobby that the main character ends up starting. That was really interesting as well. And this is just a nice realistic fiction about a topic. It's a little bit niche, it's not something that I would recommend to everybody, but I did enjoy my time with it. Then after that I have I Can Make This Promise. We're following the main character who is half Native American um, and doesn't really know that much about her background or ancestry. She finds some letters though in an attic that kind of make her start asking questions. These letters are from a long lost relative who tried to make it into the movie business during a time when Native Americans weren't really welcome into very good roles. I like the friendship dynamics in this book as well. There's like some drama between friends that I thought was something that actually happens to young girls. I also really like the family in this book. I felt like they were all really there for each other and that was really sweet. Had a little bit of historical aspect of it, a little bit of mystery aspect to it, and good family stuff. So I like this one. Then I put... Dear Sweet Pea by Julie Murphy. I really enjoyed this one and definitely gonna read more Julie Murphy. This is just a nice realistic fiction about a young girl that's living in a small Texas town and she's kind of 
being pulled in two separate ways by her parents who are now divorced and her father has come out as gay and he's not really being accepted in the town and she starts writing all of these letters in the advice column without telling her neighbor who is the one who writes for this advice column. It was a really sweet story. It has a lot of heart and I just really enjoyed my time with it. Alright, this is kind of like the next level. These are like my top three, the best that I read. One of them is The Night Diary. This one really took me by surprise. I thought that I would like it but I didn't think that it would have remained in my heart as much as it has. It's one that I read more towards the beginning of the month and it still like resonates and I still feel like emotional thinking about it. The main character Nisha is what you come for in this book. I think she is like the most important part of this book and trying to get me to convince you to read it. I would say read it for Nisha. She is a sweet very kind girl. Uh, she's wise beyond her years. And she is a girl kind of like in Dear Sweet Pea that feels pulled to two different ways because of her parents. Except in this one we're set in 1947 during the partition of Pakistan and India. So they're trying to make two new countries out of this land. One of her parents is Muslim and one of her parents is Hindu and she kind of feels pulled in two separate ways. I just loved how it was written. It was written in letters to a mother that's passed away or is no longer there. Do you learn so much about like the conflict of what is happening but also you learn about her family and them trying to survive and get out of there. There's a lot of really suspenseful and like action-packed parts of this book which I didn't expect. Definitely one that will stay with me for a really long time. Top one and two I would say are kind of together but let's talk about the one that I physically have with me first and that is A Kind of Paradise by Amy Rebecca Tan. This is a book about a young girl who is forced to work in a public library because she violated the code of conduct at her school and this is her punishment. Except it kind of turns into a blessing for her. She gets to know so many interesting people that work at the library and she also learns so much about the community of people that come into the library regularly. This book is a lot about the importance of libraries but it is also about standing up for yourself and getting over some embarrassment that you may have felt for something that you did. I loved how cozy this book felt. It felt like a love letter to libraries. It made me miss my library so much and I wish that I was there right now. I really enjoyed this one. The last one is Stand Up Yumi Chung. This is by Jessica Kim. I listened to it on audiobook through Libro FM and I really loved it. It is a humorous tale of a young girl who wants to be a stand-up comedian but she's growing up with immigrant parents who want her to really focus on her education at this point and it's her defying that in some ways but also her trying to balance those two things I think is what this book is mostly about. What I really loved about this book was the main character and how she kind of functions around her family. The family in this story is so three-dimensional to me. You can tell that they're kind of being strict and want her to do this one way because they're really looking out for her, but they also understand that she has her own dreams and they allow her to have her own dreams. I love this book for the humor of it as well and for there's a community aspect towards the end of this book where they're all trying to get together and that was really lovely too. I would totally recommend this if you're looking for something sweet, funny, and cozy. This one totally delivered for me and it was exactly what I needed. It was like a comfort read, like a blanket get over myself. Those are all the books that I read for middle grade March that I wanted to rank. I did end up talking about Stamped from the beginning but it's YNF. It's for young adults really so I'm not gonna put it in this ranking. Also everything on here is fiction so I thought it would be kind of weird to put a non-fiction in here. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. Please let me know what was your favorite book you read during middle grade March and I'll see you in the comments and in my next video. Bye bye.